last session of today. Um, the first speaker is going to be Francesco Giasotto from Colo Normale Superiore di Pisa. Francesco, whenever you want. Thanks, Alfredo. So, um, good afternoon, everyone. And um, I wish, first of all, to thank you for having invited me here to present uh, some brand new results on uh, thermal transport in uh, superconducting systems. So uh, today I will talk about uh, uh, a very basic structure in, uh, in proximity systems that uh, we name the thermal superconducting quantum period transistor, so the T squared. Um, let's see the outline. So I will uh, uh, start the talk introducing some motivations uh, and the mission of this research. And then we'll introduce uh, 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 some background about proximity effect uh, in hybrid systems uh, and the impact on the density of states. Then I will show what is the concept of uh, the electrical superconducting quantum field proximity transistors and uh, what is uh, uh, its predicted thermal behavior, okay? So I will show the, uh, the realization of the thermal script, so uh, how it is uh, realized, uh, what are the expected performances, uh, uh, the results in comparison to theory. In the last part of the talk, uh, I will uh, show how to, it is possible to use uh, one of such kind of uh, 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 thermal transistor in order to implement uh, um, thermal memory cell with uh, topological protection. So uh, the argument that I'm treating now uh, deals with uh, uh, what is known as coherent electronics, so the complementary of coherent electronics. So the idea is to phase manipulate a master, let's say heat transfer in a fully solid state environment and to provide the original novel approach to realize uh, uh, novel thermal device like heat transistors, splitters, diodes, refrigerator, and uh, exotic uh, quantum circuits that take advantage of uh, uh, these above mentioned uh, building blocks in order to enhance their functionalities. Last but not least, uh, to address uh, and understand some uh, uh, fundamental problem in physics related to energy and heat phenomena. For instance, uh, square dynamics, uh, heat interference, time dependent effect, noise. Uh, the problem of the coherence, quantum thermodynamics, and so forth so on. So um, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell, so the main goal of this, uh, of this uh, color electronics at the dynamo scale, so mesoscopic color electronics, uh, is to develop quantum technology for managing heat uh, in nanoscale circuits. So uh, the physical basis of phase coherent color electronics can be easily um, explained with the aid of this uh, very simple uh, uh, cartoon on the top. So since we are dealing with uh, uh, solid state systems, uh, we, um, we will uh, be interested in, uh, in uh, quasi-particles, in electrons, in phonons. And uh, uh, so the phase coherent electronics uh, deals with uh, envisioning novel uh, physical mechanisms which are able to um, control, tend to the macroscopic uh, quantum phase typical of superconducting circuit. Uh, the manipulation of uh, the heat current flowing from hot, uh, let's say, uh, electron reservoirs to colder electronic reservoirs. Towards this end, we have uh, identified basically uh, three uh, more relevant routes in order to manipulate heat in nanoscale systems. So the first one is uh, the first toolbox is basically the exploitation of uh, the Joyson effect. So superconducting tunnel junction, in particular temperature biased uh, Joyson tunnel junction, where we have uh, an important component of the heat current which becomes phase dependent. And thanks to this, we can realize uh, quite efficient uh, uh, thermal uh, uh, modulators. Then there is another uh, interesting route that is that one based on the proximity effect. So the idea is to use the proximitized layer. So let's say normal metal or superconductors that have acquired the superconducting correlation thanks to the intimate contact with the uh, uh, nearby superconductors. And so this, let's say, S prime artificial superconductors, they are characterized by interesting properties in the sense that there are key properties like uh, um, the density of state, the electron phonon coupling, the entropy, the specific heat, they become all uh, phase dependent, okay? So they can be in principle manipulated thanks to the phase. Then there is a third uh, uh, route that is uh, uh, the, the middle, that is uh, basically um, the study of how is it possible to, uh, to control the heat flow between body residing at different temperatures 
that possibly are not even in, uh, in galvanic contact, so maybe they are just coupled to quantum circuits, so quantum resonators in the form of squid or whatever, and then so uh, to use basically the electron-photon interaction. So by tuning the electron-photon interaction, in principle, it's possible to control the amount of heat flowing from, for instance, uh, the left reservoirs to the right reservoirs. So now in the following, I will show the first effective implementation of a proximity-based uh, uh, thermal uh, quantum transistors that allows uh, 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 sizable temperature modulation and implementation of this uh, uh, first uh, memory cell. So uh, as I was saying, we are dealing with uh, uh, metallic contact uh, between a normal metal and superconductor. So uh, where this is, uh, I mean, uh, this end part can be uh, a short, uh, let's say, metallic uh, piece or uh, even a short metallic superconductor. And we know that in this system, I mean, the uh, charge transport uh, occurs thanks to Andrea reflection. It's the process for which, uh, I mean, an electron incident from the normal metal for energy smaller than the superconducting gap uh, is retroreflected along the incoming electron time reversed path uh, while at the same time a Cooper pair condensates the superconductor. So this mechanism allows uh, the uh, propagation of a charge, let's say, uh, from one part to the other, but not the propagation of energy, okay? So below the gap, basically, uh, under reflection prevents uh, the, uh, the flow of uh, heat current from one side to the other. So now, I mean, if we connect uh, uh, such two of these blocks on the left uh, to realize an SNS junction, for instance, uh, so the electronic correlation due to Andrea reflection will extend from one side and from the other side, from left and right inside the normal metal. And so this uh, uh, will, uh, if they overlap sufficiently, they will uh, realize uh, uh, a novel kind of uh, uh, state inside the normal metal, the, 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 say the normal resonator, okay? In particular, I mean, they create uh, the so-called Andrea bound state, which are responsible for uh, allowing the flow of dissipation and supercurrent across the system. So uh, typically, I mean, uh, the, uh, the system that uh, we are using, at least what I'm going to show, are metallic systems, so diffu diffusive system, disorder, made the disorder um, metallic thin films, uh, and they operate in diffusive regimes, so in quasi one-dimensional geometry. Diffusive means indeed that mean free path is much smaller than the characteristic length of the system, it's much smaller than the the phase, uh, the, the phase in length. Uh, relevant parameter in the system are the diffusion coefficient, uh, the superconducting gap of the superconductors, uh, phi, phi is the microscopic phase of the other parameter, and then there is one important scale, energy scale, that is the tallest energy, that is basically the uh, typical, uh, let's say, energy of uh, a disordered coherent conductor. So a system like this uh, uh, can be very successfully, ex um, I mean, uh, treated from the theoretical point of view with a, let's say, quasi-classical equation. In particular, one class of these are called the Usadal equation. These are a sort of, uh, let's say, diffusion equation that allows to calculate some key properties, like, for instance, uh, the density of states uh, in this normal metal. Uh, uh, not, not only, I mean, the supercurrent spectral density and so forth and so on. We are, um, in, this, in this moment, particularly interested uh, uh, to describe uh, the density of state of the metal because this one will be uh, absolutely relevant for the calculation of the heat current flowing in a proximity metal. So uh, the key properties of the density of states are that is a symmetric function of the energy and possess uh, um, a, a gap, so a forbidden region for, for quasi-particles uh, that can be controlled thanks to the um, macroscopic phase of, uh, of the two superconductors, okay? So by changing the phase difference across the, the, the let's say, the, the junction, the SNS junction, we can control the amplitude of the mean gap from the maximum value that depends on the length of the junction to the mean, which is almost zero when uh, we are at pi. So uh, it's interesting, first of all, to understand what is the impact uh, of uh, the proximity effect and the density of states of a proximity metal of a superconductor. So here on the left, there is a calculation from uh, Cuevas and co-workers showing uh, the density of states versus energy as a function of uh, the length here on the upper panel and the position de dependence uh, in the lower panel. So in the upper panel, we see that by changing the length of the junction, so when the junction is very 
chart, for instance, with respect to the coherence length of the superconductor, then the system behaves uh, almost like a BCS uh, uh, superconductor. So um, the, it means that uh, the interlayer acquires uh, the same, at least theoretically, I mean, uh, in this limit, the same properties as the parent uh, superconductor, which is giving rise to the proximity effect. Then by making the, the junction longer and longer, what happens is that uh, this artificial superconductor becomes uh, weaker, so the mini gap becomes smaller and smaller, and eventually when the junction is very long, I mean, uh, this tends to the density of state in, uh, in the normal state. Uh, it's interesting also to see what does it happen as a function of, uh, of uh, uh, the position. So, uh, I mean, if we move along the wire, basically we see the density of state as a strong position dependence, okay? Although the, the, the gap is, uh, is, uh, um, is position independent. So, uh, even more relevant is uh, how we can uh, control at will the, um, the amplitude of these density of states, okay? And this uh, can occur thanks to the phase dependence. So, for instance, if we suppose to change the phase difference across a superconductor from zero to pi, we, can, uh, we see clearly that we can uh, continuously change the amplitude of any gap from the largest values up to zero when, I mean, we close completely and the system resemble a normal metal. Now, uh, I mean, till now I have shown what is expected. So let's see what was, uh, what was shown. So this is uh, uh, a very nice experiment uh, that dates back to 2008 from the Stackley Group where they uh, realized uh, um, aluminum uh, silver SNS proximity squid, several uh, different devices with different length of the junction and they probed with the STM the density of states in this uh, proximity metal, let's say as a function of position and for different length. And so, for instance, if we look at the upper, sorry, the, uh, the, upper, uh, left, uh, um, the upper left ring that uh, possesses the shorter junction, we see that there is indeed a very nice mini gap developed uh, within, uh, within, the, within the wire. And uh, we see the amplitude of the, of the mini gap is almost uh, constant uh, moving along the wire as we were uh, showing before. Then uh, increasing the length of the wire in another squid, we see that uh, there is less and less pronounced uh, up to the, the very end where, I mean, uh, for, for this, uh, for this uh, uh, ring here, we have uh, a much reduced uh, effect, but some uh, induces, induced coloration inside uh, the SNS rings. Um, so this is not the full story. The full story is that then uh, it was possible, they have shown for the first time that it's possible to manipulate this density of state with the phase. So since the, this proximity metal is, is embraced in a ring uh, by changing the magnetic flux piercing the interferometer is possible continuously from zero to pi to go from uh, a situation where uh, the, the mini gap is fully developed to a situation where at pi is fully closed and then if you want you go back in a fully reversible shape. So here on the right there is a, a comparison for instance uh, just to recall the, the effectiveness of the the quasi-classical theory for, t for, for treating this system, comparing the experiment, okay, a differential conductance that they obtain as a function of uh, different fluxes per interferometer and the comparison with the theory. So the, the agreement uh, is indeed very nice. So um, starting from this idea, we, we um, uh, almost uh, 10 years ago, maybe even more, we started to, to work on the possibility of uh, uh, implementing, let's say, uh, a fully solid state, uh, a, a device-like version of this experiment with the STM. So the idea was uh, indeed to uh, obtain an artificial superconductor times the proximity effect and the phase control to the magnetic flux, and then the detection through tunnel junction implemented directly in, uh, in the proximitized uh, weak link. And this, in principle, can give rise to very high sensitivity for flux detection. So this is a the idea of, uh, of the superconducting quantum field here at proximity transistor. So we have this uh, sort of AC squid with the proximity metal in the, in the middle, and then there is the tunnel junction connected uh, to this green part that allows to make uh, the tunnel spectroscopy. And so this has been uh, 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 proven in, in different sources, let's say, to be a very a nice interferometer with very uh, nice uh, and very low, let's say, uh, flux noise. So these squid setups have been realized in, in, several, uh, in several shapes and materials. Uh, typical uh, aluminum is used as a material for the ring because it possesses pretty low kinetic inductance. Uh, 
and uh, um, for instance, uh, um, in this case, uh, the, the, um, the, the probe can be even normal metal or superconducting, and uh, as we are saying, the weak link can be normal metal or even uh, uh, superconducting. So each of them has its own uh, uh, advantages and drawbacks. So if we look, for instance, uh, at, at a strip with an end probe, I mean, when the, the, let's say, the nanowire is fully proximitized, we make uh, the spectroscopy to the junction, and the, and the standard junction is normal, so the system will, uh, will evolve from uh, a superconducting like SIN junction to an IN junction when we close the mini gap, so a full uh, straight resistive line. And so, uh, and this is the, the corresponding differential conductors on the bottom. Whereas for a superconducting probe, this will, be, will evolve from an S I S prime junction, where we have in addition the presence uh, of the supercurrent around zero, to an N I S junction when we close the mini gap of the superconductor. So this is just to make uh, um, uh, some, some history of the properties of, uh, of these uh, interferometers, okay? So, uh, then the question was, uh, okay, now that we un more or less understand how we should behave an electrical uh, interferometer based on proximity effect, uh, the question is, it is possible to use this for very effective uh, uh, heat current manipulation in nanoscale circuits, okay? And the answer is, uh, is yes. So the idea is uh, indeed to create the heat counterpart, the thermal counterpart of uh, the script, okay? So a thermal superconducting quantum interference proximity transistor. And this is... Uh, something I would say very, uh, very, very simple to, to conceive. So as, as here in, the, in this, uh, in this, uh, 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 this uh, um, sketch, we have just uh, the superconducting loop with the link in the middle. On the right, we have uh, a normal metal of superconducting probe. They, res they reside at different electronic temperatures. The idea is to study the heat current flowing to the system. So, a very simple, um, let's say, um, basic understanding of the devices can be gained if we sit uh, and if we suppose to be in, uh, in the linear response regime in temperature. That means uh, uh, that the temperature in the two system uh, is uh, the difference between the two temperature is, uh, is pretty small with respect to the average temperature of the system. And so in the linear response regime, we can define the thermal conductor of the system. Okay, that basically is uh, the convolution of the density of states of the proximity nanowire, the probe injunction, and the squared of the energy, okay? So, I mean, if we study the thermal current, the thermal conductance of this system, here on the left and the right uh, top panels for uh, N probe and an S probe, we see that, uh, uh, I mean, the thermal conductor here is shown as a function of temperature for different values of the flux. So we go from the blue, deep blue curve where the, the gap is fully developed, and we see that uh, for low temperature there is a, a dramatic reduction of the thermal conductor with respect to the normal state. This is expected because for very low temperature, I mean, is, is very gapped, and so, I mean, this is calculated for in the regime of uh, short junctions, so the density state is almost that, that one of a DCS superconductor. And then by changing the flux, we just reduce uh, the mini gap inside, uh, inside the, uh, the proximity wire, so the system will tend to con conduct more heat current to the system. But you already see that in a system like this, uh, there is a suppression in principle of several orders of magnitude between uh, closed gap, open gap. Something similar happens also for a superconducting uh, probe that is here on the right that of course uh, may provide an even more isolation, but the drawback is that uh, um, uh, sti since one of the two electrons still is always superconducting, so this means that at the end, the full heat transport to the system will be limited by the remaining superconductivity in uh, the superconducting probe. It's also important uh, to analyze what does it happen as a function of the length. So as we are saying, the longer the junction, the less proximitizes the junction, so the less uh, uh, modulation in terms of heat we can provide in the system, okay? So in principle, if we want to, uh, to operate one of such interferometers, the idea is to realize a system with a very short junction, the shortest as possible, so a tauless energy that is uh, large with respect uh, to the gap or comparable to the gap, so that we can achieve this uh, efficient suppression like in the dash dash, the dashed line uh, that corresponds to the very short junction limit. So, uh, the idea was indeed to realize a script very short with a short junction of the order of a few coherence length at most, and then to prove that it is possible to achieve this uh, 
effective uh, manipulation of, uh, of the heat current. So on the left the top, we have uh, the thermal squeeze structure scheme. Okay, so let's say this ring uh, embracing, in this case, a superconducting weak links. So it is uh, an aluminum-aluminum contact. So it's a very short and narrow wire. The wire is typically 400 nanometers. The idea, I mean, if we look at this structure here, if we suppose to heat the normal metal electrode, that's the red one that is connected to the script, uh, that is a normal uh, electrode, as we are saying, because uh, it provides uh, advantages. If we uh, uh, suppose to give a fixed power to this, uh, to this uh, electrode here, and then we study how it does it evolve the heat transport across the tunnel junction versus the, the mini gap existing in the proximity wire, we see that uh, indeed by reducing the mini gap, uh, dramatically increases the power transfer, the heat power transferred from the red electrode to the rest of the structure, okay? So here, when we go to 80% reduction in the, in the mini gap, uh, it basically corresponds to almost four orders of magnitude of variation. Basically, it is given by the amount of residual states, so let's say the gamma, Dines gamma inside the system, okay? So, a very nice junction or tuning of the environment, of course, to reduce the residual state will be beneficial in order to have this uh, on-off state uh, for heat. So here on the, on the bottom is just uh, a pseudo-color image of one of such structures that we realized with uh, conventional electron bilithography, uh, triangle shadow mask evaporation. And uh, basically, you see, I mean, the, the face of the, the loop, the interferometer. In the middle, we have uh, the small... Uh, superconducting aluminum nanowire, then there is connected this aluminum manganese uh, probing electrode. And then we connect additional uh, aluminum probes here on the right, uh, operating as, sorry, as heaters and thermometers in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the structure. So what we do basically is that we heat the system, we impose some, uh, some uh, uh, stationary, let's say, uh, power in the system. And then uh, in real time, we measure the electronic temperature established uh, in steady state in this uh, normal metal electrode as a function of uh, the flux of piercing the interferometer. So for a given power, of course, what we expect that change in the mini gap will change the amount of heat flowing out outside and we can make uh, a modulation of the temperature thanks to the, let's say, control of the spectral properties of the metal. Because I mean, what in, I didn't, uh, tell before is that till now, I mean, we were pretty effective in controlling uh, heat current, but thanks to the interference of Joyston coupling, okay? So here, I mean, in some sense, uh, is not really the first time, but is uh, maybe the, the first time it is pretty effective, the way of controlling the spectral properties of a metal in order to control the several key parameters, thermal and uh, electric parameters. So uh, in the case, uh, in the, what, what to expect in the electric, uh, behavior of the thermal squeeze. So here is shown, so here, so we have uh, uh, just to resemble a few, a few concepts, I mean, uh, when this, still we are dealing with a superconducting weak link. Uh, in the case, the superconducting weak link is short. I mean, it possesses a, 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 a sinusoidal, sorry, I'm making mess, a, sinus, a, a distorted sinusoidal current phase relation, okay? Distorted because uh, I mean, if it is short, is uh, I mean, one it is predicted that it is, uh, it is uh, um, um, non sinusoidal basically, and uh, so this means that if we apply a voltage bias across uh, across a squid a script as we as we see here, we we can basically I mean, for fixed voltage, the current will be a continuous function of uh, of the phase. So you see that. Uh, when, uh, when, the f when the mini gap is closed, uh, there is uh, low current and then we'll maximize at uh, for half integral values uh, of the flux. Here we are uh, in a different regime where our nanowire is pretty, uh, is longer than uh, the uh, superconducting current line. It is of the order of six uh, psi zero. So the current phase relation is already intermediate regime long, is, uh, becomes completely um, hysteretic, sorry. becomes hysteretic. And uh, this means uh, that uh, because uh, um, basically there is the nucleation of a slit in the structure. So, I mean, and these two branches that we see this, uh, you see that it's completely hysteretic. So the, the path uh, depends on if uh, we are uh, moving forward or backward in the system. And uh, these two branches correspond to different uh, 
uh, let's say topological uh, phases or let's say uh, different branches characterized by different uh, by the different parties of the topological index that represent uh, the phase uh, the, the phase of, of uh, let's say the winding the winding number of the phase okay and uh, and so I mean uh, in this case uh, what what is interesting is that what what is expected that that basically the uh, the current for fixed volume will reflect this uh, this uh, uh, exactly this uh, historicity okay so first of all I mean uh, uh, we can characterize the IV characteristic of uh, the, the script and showing that uh, it can possess uh, uh, basically 50% modulation and uh, indeed also the current behaves as uh, uh, sketched here so there is this uh, jump in one side of the other side going backward and, and forward in the system so now let's see what is uh, the expected behavior. So uh, as we are saying, I mean, uh, the experiment uh, is performed by heating, giving some power to the central part, uh, and then uh, simply by reading the electronic temperature and equilibrium. So what is expected that when uh, there, is, uh, there are integer values of the flux, we can close, uh, we can sorry, completely open the mini gap, so there will be um, a stopping of the heat current flowing from the normal metal to the weak link, and the, for same integral values, there will be a larger flow. So this is shown here in this uh, temperature versus flux. You see it reflects in the same way what we are saying before. So for zero, there is an uh, integral value to flux. There is a stopping of heat, so the island uh, is more heated. There is a maximum in temperature. And then when we go around uh, half integral values, there is this uh, hystericity thanks to the presence of this, uh, uh, let's say, multi-valued uh, current phase relation in the system. Um, I mean, we have characterized the, 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 um, the valve, or let's say the transistor, different, uh, for different injected power, so from low to high. So you see that increasing the power increases at the average level because we're increasing the temperature in the system. And then uh, this sort of butterfly that represents the hysteresis is almost or, or less uh, uh, constant, okay? So uh, what, what does it happen? Indeed, if we collect just the delta T, that is the maximum modulation temperature, is that we can achieve a maximum of 16 millik of uh, swing in temperature that corresponds to 1.7% uh, at decimal temperatures, and that the average temperature indeed increases uh, with the power as expected. Here, I mean, on the right, there are just uh, a comparison with a simplified uh, thermal model that takes into account the main relaxation mechanism, escape, uh, heat escape mechanism, present in the structure, and uh, it is able to provide, uh, uh, I would say, a reasonably good uh, uh, um, behavior I that is in, in a reasonably good agreement with the, with the, with the system. So uh, let's see what is the impact of the bus temperature. Um, by increasing the bus temperature, it's, it's interesting to see how, how does it relax. So we see a low temperature by increasing, I mean, up to 800 millikelvin. I mean, the effect is present. Uh, and uh, basically the hysteresis is reduced and also the swing is reduced. The swing is reduced thanks to the increase of the electron phonon coupling in the normal metal electrode. And the width of the butterfly is reduced because uh, by increasing the temperature, we reduce the proximity gap. So this uh, increases uh, the coherence length. And so the junction goes towards uh, the limit where it's less uh, hysteretic, okay? And so we can see here that already the delta T, so the swing in temperature for uh, temperatures of the bus approaching 1K is uh, still around 20% of the maximum. So we can say that, uh, I mean, up to 1K is possible to observe the behavior of the, of the red reduced of our uh, system. So now is just a very last slide. I want to show the first implementation of uh, a thermal memory. So as we are saying, the temperature, since it shows this uh, nice uh, hysteretic behavior, it can in principle be used as, as a memory. So these two different branches uh, are completely, in some sense, separate, okay? So if we fix, uh, if, we, if we think to fix for some fixed uh, um, reference bias, let's say, uh, flux bias, at some point, uh, we can define two, two position in this uh, temperature to flux uh, phase diagram, okay? So we have uh, zero and one that correspond to to different states, so they can low temperature and high temperature, and then they can uh, encode information, okay? So zero, one are characterized by different topological index, and that is discriminated by the parity of the winding number of the phase. So this means that by giving a pulse on the positive direction, for instance, we can make the writing process, and giving a negative pulse, we can, we can go on, 
on, uh, on the other state, okay, erasing. So if, for instance, here the readout is given for, for some fixed power, you see the positive bias, uh, we achieve the state one, negative bias of the pulse, we achieve the zero state, okay? And this can be repeated uh, continuously with, uh, with very repeatability. We have then uh, uh, analyzed the stability against flux fluctuation, adding some uh, oscillations on top uh, of, uh, of uh, this system here, modulation of the flux, in order to show that the system is very stable indeed. And then what's interesting is that this, uh, mm, this uh, memory shows a fully non-volatile behavior. So this means that we can put the memory in one state and then we can depower the, uh, the electrode and then we can repower the electrode to obtain the same state. And this because uh, there is this uh, protection for which is the, I mean, the memory is just given by the circulating car in one sense or the other. So, and these two states are protected by the very large uh, uh, barrier that prevents uh, stochastic uh, phase leap uh, from one side to the other side. So here, this non-volatile behavior is shown here, as you can see. So when we, we power, we give power to the system, heating power, we read, in this case, zero. Then uh, when we are in the other portion, there is uh, off, uh, one off, one off, one off, so forth on. I mean, in time, this is very stable. And, uh, I mean, the different temperature of, the, of this memory is uh, apparently pretty low, it's four millikelvin, but I mean, it's very repeatable in time. So in some sense, it's, a, it's an interesting concept. Okay, so these are just a conclusion. So we have uh, demonstrated phase tuning of thermal properties of nano-size superconductor, and we have shown a sizable temperature prolongation in the high flux to temperature transfer function with the operation up to one Kelvin. We have uh, shown uh, probably the very first realization of a first tunable thermal memory where the logic state can be encoded by the temperature that has shown robustness against fluctuations and uh, non-volatility. So at the end, uh, I believe that this, uh, this object can be relevant, or at least is the first step in order to realize some technological application like uh, energy harvesting, logic archi general heat logic architecture, thermal amplifiers, or non-volatile data storage uh, units, and the end maybe also heat engine. So, with this, uh, I have concluded, and I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Francesco, for this very interesting talk. And there is a question there in the back. Yeah, thank you. Very, very interesting result. So I have a question about the last uh, data that you showed about the, um, uh, the, memory. the, the memory encoded in the persistent currents. And I was looking at the X scale and its seconds. And I, I can tell you that we, we see something on the time scale of hours, which I'm wondering if you also see. So on the time scale of hours, we see that ionizing um, impacts in the substrate actually reset this current. I agree with you if you do the phase slip calculation, this, these persistent currents, they should live forever. Yes. But, but they don't. <laughs> and, and I think what we have concluded by going to Grand Sasso under the mountain, <laughs> where they do live forever, uh, well, no, where, where forever means three cosmic days. Cosmic rays. Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, well, ionizing radiation, but mostly, yes, mostly neons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So do, well, you see, do you see that? Because here the time scales are still, I mean, they're long, but they're just tens of seconds. Do you yes, see this, this is on the tens hour? of seconds. We have another experiment where we measure the electrical part where it is several hours also. And you don't see any No, we don't see anything, no. You don't see anything? No, okay. no, no. Well, well maybe there is, a, there is a reason because, I mean, the, um, the energy barrier for this, uh, the, the phase leap barrier is so huge here. I mean, if you calculate this, uh, the rate for escaping from, uh, let's say, the topological index one to the other is of the order, I mean, the rate uh, e to the minus 20, 280. So it's 70 seconds, so it's absolutely suppressed this. Unless you are very near to the switching, okay? Yeah, yeah. So it's, because it's a pretty short junction, this. So, I mean, the, let's say the, the corresponding tau energy is pretty large. Good, well, uh, that means we might learn something from this geometry. If you don't, <laughs> if you don't see this uh, in, in, in our community, we might learn how to suppress well, maybe, maybe we, can, we can make uh, one of the string and put yeah. it under the mountain. 
Well, if you, if you don't see escape now, you will not see it under well, the Well, I mean, maybe it ma that is more interesting because uh, <laughs> we <c> <laughs> well. if you want to make the qubits, maybe it's more interesting. I mean, yeah. this is just uh, a modest, uh, let's say, thermal device. Okay. <laughs> All right, great. Thanks. <laughs> Another question? Uh, just about the process for the cooling of, uh, uh, of your device. So I understand that when the gap is smaller in the normal region, it's easier for quasi-particle to tunnel in. Uh, but then how do they escape from the normal region to the superconducting electrodes, which have uh, still the, the big gap? I'm not sure that I have understood exactly what you're asking me, you. sorry. So I, I'm trying to understand how the heat is transported uh, through the superconducting part. Ah, okay, okay. So you are saying basically. I'm saying that I'm injecting, you're injecting a quasi particle uh, uh, above the mini gap. Yes. The mini so gap is a local property, and within the ring, which is here in blue. So you are, you are asking me gap. how it's thermalizing, let's say, when it goes, uh, let's say, inside the S prime part in the rest of the ring. Yes. I would say, I mean, basically, uh, first of all, because the heat that is injected is small. So maybe there is sufficient time in order to evacuate. Uh, sufficiently because I mean the ring is big uh, there is a very nice contact with the same material it is true that there is a, a slightly reduced mini gap but is an SS prime junction so some heat for sure will will go so basically it's this I would say so there is possibility so I mean the, the experiment is showing that in principle it's possible to do this I agree with you that is not the perfect uh, evacuation in general because uh, I mean but, uh, when you do the calculation how do you uh, how do you, how do you uh, uh, okay, this. yes, the, the calculation is pretty, is pretty um, simple. Uh, we um, have a few slides here. One slide to show you this. Yeah, so basically, um, I mean, is uh, what we use uh, typically for, for analyzing this, uh, uh, this kind of system. So we, we have uh, basically three different boxes, so electrons in the, uh, in, uh, in the proximity wire, it's phonons, uh, and the phonon in, uh, in uh, sorry, it, this is in the island, okay? So it's, uh, it's not in proximity wire. In the proximity wire, we have uh, um, considered everything resides at the same temperature. And by using simply the fact that there is a, um, a dramatic uh, impact of the Kapitza coupling in the, in the system, because it is a very narrow and long wire. So here, apparently, I mean, uh, is, uh, we are working at sufficiently high temperature. It is 800, temp 800 millikelvin, 900 millikelvin of electronic temperature in, the, in this uh, long island, where everything is uh, capitulated, okay? So, and uh, in, indeed, the, the regime where there is a capitza limitation or electron funnel limitation is around 700 millikelvin for this kind of structure here. And so, I mean, it, it, there is nothing complicated. So basically we solve uh, a system of uh, thermal balance equations, so no linear, let's say, integral equation that uh, states that uh, all the current, uh, heat current going inside and outside uh, is uh, equal to zero at the end. So, but here we assume that the weak link uh, has the same temperature as uh, the rest. So is at the bus temperature. So, I mean, the, if we look at the, uh, if you remember, if, if, if you want, I can go back to show you the, the agreement. So, I mean, it's a very simple theory, but allows to grasp what is going on in some sense. So, in this sense, I would say that I agree that uh, in S prime is difficult to evacuate, uh, but if, uh, I mean, the tunnel junction is 60 kilo, huh? it's pretty opaque, I would say. So, at the end, the amount of heat that is going uh, through is not so much. Maybe if we want to make a very effective uh, heat modulator with uh, tens and tens of milli K, like we did with the squids, uh, maybe it's more difficult there. So there maybe we, we, we have to, to think a little bit better what is going on. But for instance, for a memory, it's nice, this. We don't care so much, you see. So these two states, four milli Kelvin of uh, difference uh, can be exceptionally well resolved and maintained in time. So, but the question is, who is going to make a thermal computer? Nobody. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, but uh, I think we are running out of time, so let's one, one. No, 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 one last one. one, last one. So, uh, as far as I, did I understand correctly that the hysteresis is like the squid, typical squid hysteresis where you, you know, change the number of flux corner in the, in the loop? No, this is not due to the, to the screening parameter of the squid. 
So there okay. is a there is a, a substantial difference. So what you are talking about is when you have a loop, when, when you have a loop and the screening parameter due to the kinetic inductance or geometric inductance of the loop is sufficiently large. Yeah, your loop is small. Yeah. This is very small. So here, I mean the screening parameter that is basically the ratio between uh, the screen the the total inductance uh, of the loop and that one of the, li the weak link here is much uh, smaller, than, uh, of smaller than 0 0.1. So it's very small. Here, the hysteresis stems from the fact that S prime is a long junction. So the current phase relation of a superconducting quasi-one-dimensional quasi Joyson junction is, uh, becomes uh, strongly skewed and non hysteretic when the length is larger than 3.5 sine naught. R right, right, but it's still the squid, the flux in the squid and the current phase relation that does it. It's not the temperature is, uh, exactly, per se. Exactly, yes. So, yes, for sure. So one might say that uh, instead of that you in actually encode your memory into the flux degree of freedom and not to the temperature, but you use temperature to read it out. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Absolutely. Indeed, okay. the, the first uh, the first step Sorry, of this Francisco. was done on a. We need we need to move on. I, I have to escape. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we <laughs> So thanks, okay, uh, thank Francesco, you. again. Thank you again. <laughs> Next speaker.